This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Nermeen Sheikh. Welcome to our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. In Pennsylvania, a new grand jury report has revealed how more than 300 Catholic priests sexually abused a thousand children and possibly thousands more over seven decades, and that the church leadership covered up the abuse. On Tuesday, Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro described some of the report's findings. In the Diocese of Pittsburgh, the grand jury named 99 priests who sexually abused children. A group of at least four predator priests in Pittsburgh groomed and violently sexually assaulted young boys. One boy was forced to stand on a bed in a rectory, strip naked, and pose as Christ on the cross for the priests. They took photos of their victim, adding them to a collection of child pornography which they produced and shared on church grounds. To make it easier to target their victims, the priests gave their favored boys gifts, gold crosses to wear as necklaces. The crosses were markings of which boys had been groomed for abuse. The Pennsylvania report details how priests raped young girls and boys, including one priest who raped a young girl in the hospital after she had her tonsils out. Another priest impregnated a young girl, then arranged for her to have an abortion. The report also reveals how the Church orchestrated a massive, systematic cover-up to conceal the abuse, including lying to the community about why a priest was removed from a parish, transferring pedophile priests rather than firing them, and locking abuse complaints away in what the Church called a, quote, secret archive. This is Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro. All of the victims were brushed aside in every part of the state by church leaders who preferred to protect the abusers and their institutions above all. Priests were rape raping little boys and girls, and the men of God who were responsible for them not only did nothing, they hid it all for decades. Monsignors, auxiliary bishops, bishops, archbishops, cardinals have mostly been protected, many including some named in this report, have been promoted. Father Schlert, identified in the report, is now Bishop Schlert. Bishop Whirl is now Cardinal Whirl. Father Zubik is now Bishop Zubik. Predator priests were allowed to remain in ministry for 10, 20, even 40 years after church leaders learned of their crimes. In those years, their list of victims got longer and longer. While charges have been filed against two priests in Pennsylvania, the report states the statute of limitations has expired on almost all of the offenses. On Wednesday, the Center for Constitutional Rights and the Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests, known as SNAP, sent a letter to the Justice Department demanding a federal investigation into church abuse. Pressure is also growing on Pope Francis to respond as church sex abuse scandals continue to grow across the globe. In a moment, we'll be joined by two guests, a survivor of sexual abuse by a Pennsylvania priest and a former Catholic priest who now helps survivors. But first, I'd like to turn to a video produced by the Office of the Pennsylvania Attorney General featuring the voices of several survivors of church abuse. My name is Robert Corby and I'm 83 years old. Sean Doherty, 48 years old. Carolyn Fortney, 37. I grew up in a small western Pennsylvania town, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. I grew up in Bethlehem. And Hot, which is like right behind Steel High High School, Steelton area. I was groomed starting young. The day I met him, I was, I was around 18 months old. They targeted me because I was fatherless. I was in my diaper, and I ran out and ran right to him. We, we were taught, I mean, the priests and the nuns are God. I just think, like, the word God makes me think of him, and I just... <laughs> You're being groomed to get used to uh, a grown man's hands, you know, on you regularly. So he would always 
have his hands on me. When you have the priest um, touching you every day, you know, that's a hard memory to, uh, to have. The first thought of an erection that you have in your life is by the hands of the priest. All of a sudden, he was gone. Father Karchik in my eighth grade year was just up and moved with no notice, no anything. The town was devastated. Everybody loved him. Well, they haven't found help yet. He abused it, and the church covered it up. Who would have believed me, a priest in 1948 or 47 would abuse you to do that? Never heard of such a thing because they covered it up. It doesn't ever go away. It, it has an effect on you for the rest of your life. And I'm a survivor. This is not a vendetta against the church. We're called survivors for a reason. These are people that these priests ruined their lives, and they still, at 83 years old, still affects them. I just feel like I've, like my whole life has been a lie. Has, has absolutely destroyed me. My children suffered. My wife suffered. My dad found out, but he went crazy. I was very unaffectionate. I couldn't show any affection with my wife. I had no desire to have children, none, because of this. My ch children I couldn't hold or hug. I didn't feel comfortable at all. I still don't feel comfortable now in relationships. No kids for me. The affection I could give to her. And thanks to Father Royer, he took that away from me. I mean, it's you know, affected my life so much. This is a lifelong issue with survivors. They have to be accountable to church for what they did. I've waited for a long time for this. I think this report's going to help people who don't have a family because they're going to know that there's a lot of people out there now that believe them and are behind them. This is one of the proudest things I've ever done in my life. I'm so happy. Speaking about your abuse is a, a very important step in the healing process. I just was always saying, they're not going to beat me. It'll just be refreshing <laughs> to not have to, I guess, pretend like I'm someone else all the time. very lonely, especially when it's your word against God. Voices of victims of sexual abuse in Pennsylvania. When we come back, we'll be joined by one of those victims, Sean Doherty, as well as a whistleblowing priest, Bob Hudson. Stay with us.